Oops. Thank you, Maya. Thank you very much, GoDaddy. Uh, GoDaddy Pro specifically. Uh, we do have a small group, so I, I, you know, I know Maya mentioned that the recording will stop if people ask questions, but please feel free to ask questions in the middle, and hopefully we'll re record some of those questions because I think they're going to be very insightful. Uh, I've been, well, I guess I should go through the CV just to uh, help out the audience. I'm Robert Jacoby. I'm a uh, industry uh, analyst in the internet content management space as well as strategist. I've run an agency for 20 years. I've been the president of Open Source Matters, uh, second largest open source content management system out there. I think still um, WordPress is, of course, leaps and bounds ahead of any other uh, content management system out there and worked in the ecosystem or on the platform with a number of WordPress companies, uh, one being acquired by uh, WP Engine uh, a couple of uh, year and a half ago, or two years ago, COVID time. I can't even remember what day it is. So the, the big question, is, as Maya really nicely put, is are we part of a platform? Are we part of an ecosystem? What does that mean? What are the differences? And how does that sort of affect how we're doing our work today? And, and do we need to rethink that to be more successful? The biggest question that always comes out is, you know, I'm part of the WordPress ecosystem and I'm part of the WordPress ecosystem. I use that term a lot. And I've been thinking about it over the last really two years with regards to, is it WordPress that's making my business successful or is that just a, you know, a piece or a puzzle that you know, defines the success of the work I'm doing day to day? To, to, examine that story a little bit better. Uh, I'm just going to talk briefly about the agency I used to have and how it was focused on a specific content management system, in this case, Joomla. So for approximately 15 years, Joomla was the software we used. And we could say we were part of the Joomla ecosystem, very similarly to how many people say they're part of the WordPress ecosystem. But we discovered that we really weren't part of an ecosystem per se. We were part of the platform. We focused solely on developing just code bits of platform. We didn't take that message outside of a bit of code. If you look at what an ecosystem means in the natural world, it's a number of intermingled parts that are communicating with each other, helping each other grow, uh, and, and developing new things. So, you know, new forms of life, uh, you know, there, there's water and rain, all these things that uh, take place within an ecosystem. But Joomla, and I would argue similarly WordPress, are, are, are platforms, are very specific entities within an ecosystem. Back to the natural environment, sun is critical for an ecosystem to thrive. Sunlight helps plants, plants grow, animals eat plants, animals die, they go back to helping plants grow. So WordPress isn't per se the ecosystem. Joomla isn't the ecosystem. It's just a, a part of, and in this case, we'll just use platform since that's a very you know commonly used word to describe the whole process. So I, I, I would really ask everyone in, uh, to, to question where they think they are. If, if you're saying you're part of the WordPress ecosystem, well, you're not. You're, you're, you're part of a different kind of business model. And you may be an agency that works in a specific industry. That's your ecosystem. You happen to be using WordPress as the tool. Maybe because it's the best tool, maybe it's because it's the most common tool, but it, that is just a tool within your ecosystem. I spoke much about this over the last couple of years to agencies around the invisible CMS. Take your business, take your skills, take them away from a specific tool because locking yourself into one part of, one part of an ecosystem uh, can limit your growth and your thinking. Let's... Let's look at GoDaddy, and I briefly spoke about this with uh, Maya before the conversation, that is GoDaddy just a tool 
is cPanel just a tool? I'm sitting mentioning cPanel because Jason Nickerson is on the cPanel. And I think GoDaddy and cPanel are two very, very different companies. I think that cPanel is much more in that realm as WordPress. It's a platform. And I look forward to the argument after the discussion because I, I know we can uh, split some hairs, but it, it, it's very specific as to what it wants to do. It wants to help hosts manage some infrastructure. It's very specific, very tiny, and there, there's a million things that live around it, above it, but it, it's a, a niche product, for lack, for lack of a better term. GoDaddy, I would say, on the other hand, may have started out as a platform, a platform to buy and renew domain names, and that's we're talking 20 years ago at this point or more. I forget how old GoDaddy is, but it, it has evolved to create its own ecosystem, meaning it's not beholden to one specific platform. It, it is able to take advantage of multiple platforms in different ways. GoDaddy is a registry. It's a registrar. It's a host. Uh, it's a security company. It's it's it uses WordPress. It uh, provides back to the WordPress platform with a plugins and tools. So it, it's really created this uh, sort of circle of life that if you live in the GoDaddy ecosystem, you can be completely covered for all your things, all your feeding, all your watering, everything. Um, so going back and forth between, you know, is WordPress an ecosystem or, or is WordPress a platform? GoDaddy could live without WordPress, and it has for a long time. And it's, you know, growing that part of its ecosystem, but it was never dependent on, you know, one single aspect to keep itself alive. Conversely, the WordPress code can't live without itself. If there is no code, there is no WordPress. There is no... WordPress ecosystem as we understand it. It is a platform. It is solely responsible for itself. And, you know, without that development, all that, it won't exist. But companies, agencies, hosts, uh, if they are thinking about themselves not being WordPress ecosystem, but part of a larger ecosystem, can be successful without one bit of software. Not to diminish anything that you know, the code provides, but it's, it's very critical to think outside of the code, outside of just one bit. Uh, there are communities around it. Uh, we can call them WordPress communities, but WordPress still itself is a platform. It's code. And, and, and that code is, is valuable only in and of itself, depending on how others use it and how as soon as it becomes relevant to how someone else uses it, it's now part of that ecosystem. That ecosystem isn't a WordPress ecosystem, it's an ecosystem that utilizes WordPress. And I think that's very, very important to think about whether you have an agency or whether you're a plugin developer. So, you know, we've had sort of the GoDaddy example of, on how GoDaddy can even be its own ecosystem. Let's look at something like uh, Yoast as an example. Yoast is, you know, hugely famous for ha having a great SEO plugin for WordPress. Is Yoast a platform? Is it part of an ecosystem? You know, how, how are they thinking about what they're doing? Well, of course, they're trying to get more people to utilize their plugin and services on WordPress. But I would argue that Yoast is a discoverability platform in an ecosystem that's much larger than WordPress, that utilizing, you know, if, if the, the thinking should be, we are Yoast, we are discoverability, we can help you get found on the internet. Who cares if it's WordPress? Does it matter that it, they have a great WordPress product? Sure, but I would not say that they're part of the WordPress ecosystem. I would say they're part of the discoverability ecosystem where WordPress happens to be, a, you know, a critical component of their business, but thinking beyond WordPress because the world never stops, technology never stops, is important. You can still focus all your energy on one platform, but you shouldn't lose sight of the fact that that platform is not there necessarily to help you. 
It just happens to be there and it may be the best for different reasons uh, to monetize that platform. How many people think, uh, you know, of Amazon Web Services as, as an ecosystem? No, everyone thinks about it as a platform. Uh, I'm just going to throw my stuff onto AWS. Well, okay, that's great. But uh, it, it, it also has sort of its ecosystem. Um, I would say because of the different offerings that are embedded into that world, you could live in an Amazon world all you want. Same with Azure. Again, same with GoDaddy. Um, the more life you have in your ecosystem, uh, the more sustainable it is in the long run and may uh, provide opportunities for unique ideas and things to come about. You know, my stress here is don't become myopic about a single piece of software. That will always, you know, th that's that's the the way of the dodo. I've specialized so highly on one piece of software that I live on this island. But if any other creatures come on this island, then my whole species could get wiped out. You know, there is the day-to-day -day business, the tactical business of, you know, how do we evaluate what we're using and how do we take advantage of it? But thinking about it in the greater scheme of what do I really do? What am I really successful at? And, and almost rebranding yourself in a lot of ways. So again, back to Yoast, uh, that's the example I've been thinking about all week is that, you know, it's, it's not about being a, a content management system plugin. It's about discoverability and how do you take advantage of that environment? That doesn't mean that tomorrow you're going to change your whole business, but if you keep that, you know, out there in the sort of the ether thinking about what that means, you could actually be prepared for the next COVID, for the next technology shift, for whatever it may be, if you're not, completely locked into that one little island, like I'm only WordPress and if WordPress dies, then my whole business collapses. That's, you know, you need to be able to be more flexible uh, around platforms and ecosystems. So that's sort of in a nutshell, I, you know, my firm belief is that WordPress is a platform. It is a part of a much larger ecosystem. Using the phrase WordPress ecosystem, I think, is a mistake. It uh, diminishes actually what you're doing because your ecosystem is much more than just WordPress. And you know, the, the answer at the end of the day is, you know, which one should I think about? Is it a platform or is it an ecosystem? Well, if you're not completely part of the platform, if you're not sitting there developing solely the platform, if you're not you know, doing Git submissions all day long, then you're part of the ecosystem. So you know you're either part of the pro, uh, part of the platform, or 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 not. Um, sort of goes along the lines of you know if if you're if you're not buying a product you are the product. If you're not the actual platform, then you are the ecosystem. So that's that's kind of a long and short you. thing. Hi Robert, can I just interrupt you here and ask you? Um, uh, is there a, I mean, if you, let's say you're not aware of whether you are, let's say you're just um, doing your job, you're not interested, whether you're part of a ecosystem or a platform, um, would like, uh, would uh, not knowing of this, would it uh, have any business, um, would it affect the business in any way? Would, is there anything bad that can happen? Well, I think, it, I, I do think there is something bad. I think the bad part is, if you're not thinking about yourself in a much larger ecosystem, then you may be caught blindsided by changes in technology, changes in you know economies, uh, and be stuck. You know, let's let's look at how many people did not want to move to Gutenberg. You know, what happened to those people? You know, that was a, a platform shift, and if you weren't thinking about you know an ecosystem as a whole, then you could have been left high and dry. If you, you, you know, if you were, if you were a company that was dedicated to building widgets and never thought about why you were building those widgets and, or what the, the business model around those widgets could be, then you're out of luck. You're done. You know, you're moving on, you know, you're closing shop. So as we see more and more SaaS products being, you know, and, integrated into the marketplace, you know, having that awareness of 
you know, what your plugins are doing and why they're doing that is really important. And, and being flexible enough to allow other creatures into your ecosystem. So is it something from Jamstack? Is it from Joomla? Is it from Drupal? Is it from uh, Wix? You know, don't be so myopic as to think that, you know, WordPress existence is the, is the defining factor. It's just a part of all the skills you bring to your ecosystem. Understood. Thank you very much. <laughs> Speaking of uh, ecosystems, we have uh, <laughs> Robert from uh, Inside, who's uh, actually, I would uh, love to ask, what would happen to Inside if WordPress disappeared? Define disappear. The code disappeared. So who who is forking it? <laughs> I'm I'm guessing there's something lost in translation. So the the, the uh, and I'm just teasing because I know Robert understands that's, me that's quite okay, well. That's okay. That's okay. You will be not the first person uh, um, um, asking us um, how would we do what. Uh, if the, if the market would do something different. And my answer to a person uh, who was asking us that was, um, we are so close to the ecosystem that we would uh, um, recognize the, the waves that would that will um, produce before it, uh, before it would happen. So you're close to the platform? Yeah. Or ecosystem? Both. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing would be like, um, because it's there is no there is no like um, like disappearing of things like in, in, into thin air with like overnight, like um, even other um, um, CMS currently like doing their thing, releasing new versions, wink wink, and uh, and doing like um, 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 incredible work to move forward, and um, and they will simply th there needs to be a reason like even even like some ecosystems of other CMS that have a real struggle with their leadership and all of that. And they will simply, they will simply survive. And it's um, because the normal person out there using, um, using their software will simply, they have no clue that this will happen. So for them, that's like, for, for the question is, um, uh, what would other companies in terms of um, in the WordPress ecosystem, what would, they sell their clients to use and um, there is no overnight like success for like for a, for a closed platform. So let's say even if um, Squarespace, just take one of them, even if Squarespace would be the, the like the best um, editor on the, on the planet and it's way easy to use that and, and, and so on. And it would, uh, um, would make their free tier even easier. Sim people would simply not use it. They will simply go, okay, and how can I like run my business with that? And then their SaaS services go like, yeah, that's not the plan. <laughs> the plan is you bring us business, not you have your own business. And and but, but seeing that is like, um, you need to have some kind of um, like ownership of data somewhere in the world because not everyone like has their, for example, um, how is Squarespace up and running in, in Africa and all of that. And how can people like earn their living with that? And, and all these like several things and thousands of thousands of questions, they can simply be solved by a software that is like, that is marketed and, um, and sold and maintained for the local community. And that means as, we all knew from um, decades of, of, of knowledge that's like um, that's open source systems with a, little, with a little bit extra for the local community. And then you have your local solution and people can work with that. So Sorry for uh, the Robert, long answer. Right. no, it's a long answer. And there's some points I want to argue with you, but first and foremost, uh, the, the really good point is that, an enabler of an ecosystem is is open source and it you know 
I talked about WordPress being the sunlight earlier, but truly it's open source because that allows the flexibility to move with whatever the environment may bring you. You know, Robert's first answer to what would happen if WordPress disappeared was, oh, is there a fork? So that's the beauty of it. It's, it's, it's not closed, so there's, there's always some way to travel with it. The, the, the point I was making earlier is much more around the fact that a, a piece of software like WordPress is a platform and that when we use the phrase WordPress ecosystem, we're, we're actually doing ourselves a disservice. If I'm saying I'm part of the WordPress ecosystem, that implies that all I do is WordPress. When in fact, I may, much, I may actually have a much better opportunity in the future if I think about what I do very differently. I brought up the example of Yoast. So Yoast has a WordPress SEO plugin. They're very, very well known for that. That brings in an immense amount of revenue to Yoast. But what Yoast should really think about is that they're in the discoverability ecosystem and that WordPress just happens to be a large platform for them to take advantage of discoverability. But at the end of the day, the whole goal is to be found on the internet so that someone like Yo should be thinking about making sure, not today, not even tomorrow, but that they have an eye on the future that the environment may change, that software may change, that needs may change, but that their goal is to be that company that helps you get found on the internet. Yeah, but you know the mission of Yoast, right? No, I just made it up, so. Okay, the mission of Yoast is a uh, SEO for everyone. And they do, um, tomorrow, I think, they have a, like a seminar of SEO news. So they are, and they are like collaborating with Google. So they are currently on that. And I think um, for them, the answer right now is, um, how can we help the most people on the planet? And that is to help the biggest ecosystem on the planet. And because like they, they tried other uh, other systems, the problem is like the the amount of work you need you need to put in there to help other ecosystems to move forward, and that's why they're simply focusing on like on WordPress because that's a that's itself is a huge margin and a huge market. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I would say it's the largest platform for many things, but the ecosystems are are different. So, you know, you know, as you said, perfect. I mean, they want to help people with getting found, you know, exactly what the mission should be. And yes, you, you as Yoast will spend most of your resources on the biggest platform to reap the most rewards. Um, but what happens to agencies then if something changes? I mentioned uh, the shift to Gutenberg and a lot of complaints and people frustrated and not wanting to move off of widgets, for example. Yeah. yeah, because they, they needed to, they needed to, the, the problem was their, their business model was, and like, we were one agency, we were like, we as an agency were like, yes, Gutenberg is coming, like in the future, somewhere down the road, we need to look at that. And we like checked it with like, I like peeking with one eye, like to see, okay, when, when will this happen? When will this land in core? Because then it's serious. And that's why I totally get the the, the like the forced 5.0 push uh, two years. Was it two years ago? Uh, I think two years ago. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. The forced the force push to to five to, to 5.0 because then it was no longer even for us. It was like there like with this like with um, before that we had uh, um, Beaver Builder as the as our main like go to we build a, a website thing, and um, and with the decision to have um, the block editor in WordPress 5.0, there was for us like, was immediately a switch is like, okay, we will not tolerate technical debt because we are so high in the, in the ecosystem and in the, in the agency level that we cannot like tolerate, like simply dealing with a lot, a lot of technical debt. So that's why we said uh, immediately when 5.0 was come out, every thing that we do needs to hold accountable against the WordPress, um, against the block editor in WordPress core. Like from the beginning, like December uh, two years ago was like, okay, switch. Uh, everything we do must be with a block editor. There was like a, like a, uh, 
a few months in where we still had some clients with uh, um, a, a page builder and then other clients with a blog editor. But now it's like, what was people builder again? So for us, like it's completely changed and we, there is no other thing than the blog editor for us. Because insides ecosystem is not necessarily the technology at the end of the day. It's making sure your clients don't have to deal with technical debt. It's being ahead of the curve. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like we write, um, we are like, I have developers who are, who are watching PHP 8 very closely because they want to use that as soon as it will be released and like we'll pressure our hosting clients to like, hey, can we get this PHP 8 stuff? So we are like, uh, we are very, very different to the vast majority of WordPress users and developers. And that's why we, um, there is, I know like in my, in my meetup, you know, when like people met in a, in a place and uh, speak with each other, there was a time ages ago where we met p- people in person. And, um, and in my meetup, I had like normal freelancers, like doing everyday client work and they had very much problems with the blog editor because for us, it's like when the blog editor is not behaving like we want, we simply write that, that it behaves. And like, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a benefit that we can simply use by simply telling our clients the problem is right now core release will not be able to do that, but we will send you an invoice of $10,000 and uh, you have this solved. And they will go like, yeah, sure. It's okay. So and just to, just to stop you for a sec, Robert, that, so perfect example of being part of the platform for real, you know, that that's exactly what it takes. It, it, you know, if you're not doing that as a, as an agency, then you're really, you know, out of the conversation, you're, you're part of the ecosystem and you really need to evaluate what that means for you. If you are contributing like that directly to code, directly to core, I know inside provides, you know, a lot of, uh, core updates as well, that then you're part of the platform that, that is, the, and that's a great place to be because you can manage your future as well. If you're part of the ecosystem, things are going to come at you you know, surprisingly quickly, you know, again, two years ago back at Na- Nashville, when everyone discovered that, you know, Gutenberg is in, here it is, surprise. Um, you know, that takes you, uh, uh, you know, away from what, you know, is important. And it, it, it again, to, to stress where WordPress sits in the ecosystem, not the WordPress e- ecosystem, but your business's ecosystem, it's a, it's a platform and it's a big chunk of that. So, you know, how do you insulate yourself from crazy changes? One way is by, by learning what's going on all the time. The other is actually by contributing directly to the platform, uh, owning the platform uh, in whatever way you can. And that provides you the flexibility and stability going forward in the future. I, I really, really want to jump to Jason because I, I think there will be some platform versus ecosystem discussions in the cPanel universe given that I said cPanel is just a platform and, you know, you should just walk away. But I'm going to guess that Jason thinks it's much more than just a platform. Well, I mean, I, going back to, you know, the WordPress, if you're a WordPress plugin developer, I mean, wouldn't you say that in the beginning that the WordPress developers, the plugins, the theme developers, everybody that made add-ons and extensions, <clears throat> aren't they really part of the ecosystem? Because without them, without say WooCommerce building up and then being acquired, it made WordPress so much more powerful. WordPress started as a publishing platform. That was the core of it. They just It was just that. And it's turned into a content management system. It was built just for blogging and the concept is unlike other platforms like Joomla or Drupal, which tried to give you the tools to build a full website, gave you a contact form built inside, gives you all these other things. WordPress kind of got turned into something on its own. I don't think that Matt believes that, you know, in everything that's happened to it, you know, and it's, it's moved forward. But those people that built these things, that built Beaver Builder or b- built um, WooCommerce or any one of these plugins that actually changed the whole platform aren't they part of the ecosystem didn't they make the platform grow and are they are they on the platform or are they part of the ecosystem then 
if they are third parties that made the software grow. So they're part, I would argue that they're part of the WordPress platform. Now, have other people come in and taken advantage of those solutions? Of course, and made tons of money? Yes, and that's the beauty of it, of an of, of ecosystem or entities that aren't necessarily developing the code. But the best case scenario is you're, you're doing both, right? I mean, at, at the end of the day, if you are contributing to the platform, then you can grow an ecosystem. So, you know, maybe it's a little wish, wishy-washy and, you know, some people, and I don't think everyone can do that. I think recognizing that you are a platform provider, creator, or an ecosystem builder, or a combination of both, those are very different things. And knowing where you are, I think is important because if you, or if, you if you're, if you're purely focused on the platform and just contributing at night, you may not be reaping the rewards for doing all that work the way you could if you were part of the ecosystem. And if you're part of the ecosystem, you may be left blind by things that are happening on the platform and you're left high and dry. What I want to ask about cPanel per se in this uh, discussion is, you know, I would hazard that cPanel is part, is a host management system platform, an HMS. And, and that's all it is. But I, I'm, I'm guessing that th the idea around just having that platform is to maybe grow it into an ecosystem, uh, encourage people who aren't, you know, tied directly into the HMS, uh, new word for the day, um, to do different and weird things like that. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think there is, I think there is, a, but it's, cPanel is a, it's a part of um, a, a lot of different ecosystems too, because you know with with cPanel with these hosting platforms, you know we uh, we've been using the lamp lamp stack for years, you know, and that's um, primarily open source, you know Apache, you know MySQL, all this. So we've been part of using that software and acknowledging it and supporter of open source. So even though cPanel is a closed source platform. You know, we do have a big support and we are part of the community of Perl because, you know, a lot of the code is built on Perl. So, but it is, it is essentially a platform, you know, and it's a platform to manage uh, your a hosting environment. Now, 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 now the $10 million question, Jason might hang up. Uh, would it be better for cPanel to become an open source project? Well, <clears throat> Let's put it this way. I believe that there is a lot of room in, in any company, any closed company, especially one that supports open source, um, to have open source divisions, you know, to open source part of the code. You know, I mean, there's, uh, you know, a lot of questions about, well, if you're making this product for, say, WordPress, why isn't that open source? WordPress is open source. Um, I'm, I'm not at the level where I can really address that question and answer it for you. But as you know, I am an open, I've been called myself an open source evangelist for years and I love open source. And I think that the world has become um, a much better place. Um, it's empowered people who just, it's empowered people. I've seen, I've seen stories of people using this content management system as open source that changed their lives. You know, it really changed our path and direction from, you know, meeting people and getting training and learning and helping out and um, turning their lives around to be to become some powerful person in, in the whole ecosystem or platform. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I, I think there is a, um, you know, there's with everybody, everybody should um, look if they own a corporation, you know, should have the wherewithal to look and see really what open source can do, because I mean, we've seen how with open source. Look at um, Joomla, look at WordPress, and look at the history of, say, Microsoft putting out um, their um, Internet Explorer, how that went. How many versions of Internet Explorer did you see per year when WordPress had three or four, Joomla had three or four? You know, you can get stuff done a lot better with the um, platform and ecosystem behind you. <laughs> is that a, Jason, is that a lack of vision, what happened to Explorer, or um, what happened? <laughs> Oh, I think the vision was clear. The, the vision was to monetize as much as possible out of it before they got sued. Um, well, that's a business fact, right? Yes, <laughs> they, they, did not, they did not take the internet for, for, uh, for a big thing. They, they just like focusing on servers, focusing on intranets, 
as Microsoft and you, you clearly saw that because I was, I was like, I was in the browser wars when they will happen. And it was just like Netscape. And then there was this shitty thing called Internet Explorer. And then Microsoft just put their feet to the ground and said, okay, we want to have this. Like we, we have no plan with this market, but we want to have this. And, uh, and so they did. And um, nobody like fight it against that until it became so, so great that even European Union need to intervene. <laughs> and yeah, and now, uh, um, and now they are so far ahead in the, uh, we don't care about the, um, we don't care about the browser that they even like uh, killed everything, like um, killed their own browser engine by yep. just saying, yeah, we, we, we don't care. We don't like, we take we take the chromium uh, uh, internal browser thing because it works it works very well and we can focus on providing services to people who develop stuff and like that's what they're doing and that's why nobody was surprised when they bought github because it was completely aligned with their with their goals and was like yeah totally not surprising and totally aligned yeah so it's it it's possible when you have a vision and um uh, and as and answering also Jason's answer was like there is so many open source hosting management systems out there, like it, there is no need for 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 Plesk and cPanel to like cr release something because if you want to have an open source server management tool, simply take one of these thousands of available non maintained because they have no business model. Uh, hosting service uh, uh, machines, yeah. I think uh, Robert has a great business proposal for you, Jason. <laughs> no, no, do what, <laughs> st stay what you're, what you're currently doing. You're on a great path because I know, I know his European colleagues and they are, they are like, uh, that's a, that's a good path. And um, it's making sure because like, as I said, there is like other hosting environment tools and, um, and you don't hear from them, but you hear from Plask and, 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 and cPanel because they can, they have like the business model to sustain themselves. They are not like, they are not waiting for someone to chip in 10 bucks on GitHub to, to uh, like remove a bug, <laughs> so, to say it drastically. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that that's pretty much, you know, my portion of it. I know we have like 10 minutes left, uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, if you're not part of the, you know, talk about this before the conference call, the one statement is if you're not part of the platform, you're part of the ecosystem and being part of the platform means uh, intimately involved with that platform. If you're not intimately involved with WordPress, with the code, with what the plans are for WordPress, then you're part of the ecosystem uh, in, in, in a different area and you really should be aware of what's going on at the platform. Of course, if you can be part of both, uh, you'll be much more successful. Lokesh, would you have anything to add to our discussion? Uh, no, nothing much, nothing much to this. It's, I just wanted to hear both Robert and Robert speaking on this and then yes, the entry of Robert Windish made it much more, much more nice. He gave it quite a nice view. Yeah, we uh, don't see him that often, but he shows up. Uh, Robert, and Ro Robert and I will, will have a show one day together. <laughs> yeah, one-on-one. -on -one. We'll call it one-on-one -on, -one on whatever topic, okay? But then, then, the topics? but then, you know, then, then this, I would say this is much of a bigger debatable topic because then, you know, Robert gave his views and Robert, again, Robert Windish gave his views and Jason gave his views. So, you know, it depends on the eye of a person. 10 different people will have 10 different things. Yes, they will they, they will speak some common aspects of it about about it, but then there'll be something different between A and B and C and D. So let's let's just leave it at that point. At yeah, point. let's stay friends, right? Let's keep it at the friendship level still, right? So uh, uh, I saw I think Abba is still with us, and Nigel is also has joined us uh, recently, and Lisa. Lisa, thank you for joining sure you've been busy with stuff i mean it's monday and it's a wrap up day in monday in uk just before the the the, the holiday season right oh maybe 
Maybe Lisa is not able to unmute herself at the moment. That's really nice. Oh, hi. Sorry, Maya. Hi, everyone. I'm, hi. Good to see you, Maya. How is the preparation for holidays going? Oh. Uh, there are no holidays in UK regarding the Thanksgiving and stuff. You guys are not having any holidays now in UK? Yeah, I think I think we are. There's a couple, I think the lights have gone up in um, Oxford Street. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, just treating it like another day. How about you guys? Well, I think you missed a great show between the two Roberts. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just couldn't. I couldn't get in. Do you <laughs> my, see the, my, direct, my... the red recording light? So it it Hi. is. Oh, thanks, Robert. <laughs> yes. Um, sorry, I missed your talk. No, it will be published uh, later on, on on our page. So I'll send you the link so you're able to actually rejoin us and check what we've been talking about. It was very interesting conversation about uh, um, about whether uh, the difference between a platform and an ecosystem. I don't know if you have any opinion of yours when it comes to these two uh, topics. Uh, you might want to share with us. Now is the time. I'm just listening that's if that's okay <laughs> well in that case um if nigel nigel would you have anything to add to our discussion hi uh no 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 yeah uh, it's pretty much the same as what i thought um between the the difference between a platform and an ecosystem but yeah i think that the way uh robert jacoby emphasized on being more involved with the platform is important. Yeah, that that I wasn't really aware of. Well, awesome. that's great. I'm so happy. Robert, would you like to wrap up? Um, or is there anything uh, you would like to say before we split for the day? I, I, guess, I guess the, the crux of the conversation is know where you fit in. Do you, do you like the place you are? Meaning, you know, do you like being a part of the ecosystem or do you like being part of the platform? Um, is that the best way to grow? And if you're not in one or the other, know what the other one is thinking. Know, you know, know that the ecosystem may not be solely focused on the platform and know that the platform may not care at all about the ecosystem, that a lot of it may be just because that's what's best for the platform. Uh, Robert Windisch gave the best example about, you know, staying on top of, you know, Gutenberg. And if, if you weren't involved with the platform, that may have completely blindsided you. So it's, it's, it's important to be connected through, throughout all these pieces. Well, thank you all for joining tonight. I really appreciated uh, your time and effort that you showed by coming here to support our speakers and me personally as well. It was really a great honor. Next week, same time, Monday, we'll be talking about accessibility and um, ADA web compliance. So this is it, there is a company, Accessibi, uh, from Israel, and they are one of the biggest players in the market at the moment. They're going to be talking about business aspects and technical aspects of uh, why it is important to have uh, um, other compliant and uh, accessibility enabled websites. Until next time, thank you very much. See you. Thanks, Maya. Bye. See you.